Sorry. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I recently partnered with Adorama to make this spec ad. If you're interested in all the gear we used, I made a whole video for Adorama's YouTube channel, breaking all that down. But this video is going to focus less on the gear and more on the mistakes that I made on set, because there are a lot of them. Some I was able to cover up in the edit, and some I'm still regretting to this day. But before I rip it apart, let's watch the 30 second spot. All right, we ready to go? Incredibly delicious, impossibly convenient. Your favorite specialty coffee drinks, ready in seconds. A new day has arrived on Earth for coffee. So what I realized as soon as we started to put together the edit was that this scene of their first sips would be so much stronger if we saw a visual for each of their respective processes on the table. We see the visual for his process on the left. We should see the same on the right like a little tiny capsule or a electric kettle. Because the story might not be incredibly clear that he is doing the complex thing and she is doing the simple thing, and we want to visually see how small and simple her process was. So in the edit, what I decided to do was take a shot of the capsules from our product shots and inside of After Effects composite it on the table. Let me know in the comments if when you first saw this video you spotted that as being fake. Because I'm the one that did it, it's hard for me to have an objective view. I think the wide shot looks better because it's just so much farther away. It's less apparent that it's fake. The close-up I actually thought looked really bad, so I ended up ditching the idea to repurpose footage from the actual shoot, and I took some cell phone photos of some leftover capsules at my apartment from the similar angle that the close-up was shot from, and then I took that into After Effects, and I think that works a lot better than my first version, which is actually on Adorama's YouTube channel. Speaking of things that we could have done on set to save me a lot of time in the edit, we did not cover up the logos on our actor's mugs or apron. I don't know if there really was a good solve on set for the glassware because that logo is on the mug. It's not like a sticker that we could easily peel off. And it was extremely easy to cover up in After Effects. It was a little bit trickier to remove the branding on his apron, Speaking of small After Effects fixes, I removed this liquid dribble from the inside of our mug because the frozen capsule has to be slightly melted to fall out of its pod and into the mug, and that results in this, you know, not very appealing liquid. So I copied some of the mug from before it fell into it to paste over the dribble. I underexposed the milky drinks. When we first started shooting the macro stuff, we were dealing with iced coffee concentrates. And of course, the water with fake ice let tons of light through. And you can tell from the opening shot in this video that I really liked how it looked. Oh yeah! But when we shot the lattes, I regrettably did not change my exposure. You know, when you're shooting macro, your depth of field becomes razor thin. But it was still off by like a millimeter because it's so yeah, shallow. It's so, so for focus purposes, I was never wide open or anything close to it. F8 or something in that neighborhood. What I would have done on the day if I was to do it again is take that 600 watt light that we were lighting the macro stuff with and swap it for that 1200 watt light that we had outside from an earlier setup. But I didn't do that. And the noise in post was a bit more visible than I was expecting, but it became really visible once I started adding graphics with blending modes. The overlay blend mode, I believe. Adding white text uh, overlaid on darker footage really accentuated the noise in a way that I wasn't expecting, and it was very distracting to me. However, this is an issue that has a really easy solve. Noise reduction is a thing. Um, it's very easy in DaVinci. It's a little processor intensive. It might take like 20 minutes to kick out a clip, um, but it works great. So yeah, despite my exposure mistakes, after denoising and coloring this footage, I do really like how it looks. And this is also a good time for me to just say thank you to Nick Brecken for coloring this spot. Um, the version on Adorama's gear video is like a quick turnaround version that I did the color for. And by I did the color for, I mean, I just used LUTs that I like, the uh, Phantom LUTs. I had only a few days from the spec shoot 
to their deadline to post their behind the scenes video. So, you know, good LUTs are great for quick turnarounds, but I did want this to be a thing that I could put some shots of on my reel and wanted the color to be as good as possible. Um, so getting a friend that's more invested in color grading than I am uh, to do it was great. So yeah, thank you, Nick. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of his color compared to um, the Phantom LUTs. I'd be really interested to hear, honestly, because I love my Phantom LUTs. Uh, anyway, moving on. Let me ask you a question. What would you create worth $100,000? Well, Artlist is giving away $100,000 to one visionary creative to make their creative dream a reality. And I'm partnering with Artlist to spread the word. To join, post a video on your socials showcasing your $100,000 idea. Make sure to tag artlist.io and use the hashtag 100kfund. No matter what type of creator you are, pitch your wildest, craziest idea, and Artlist just might give you $100,000 to make it happen. The Artlist 100K Fund opens on September 24th and lasts until October 24th, so get your idea in as early as you can. For all the information, go to artlist.io or check out the link down in the description. Thank you, Artlist, for sponsoring this portion of the video and for having great music that I used in the spec ad that we're talking about today. All right, let's get back to my mistakes. And this next mistake is just a really small one that I made in my packing, but it's a mistake that I'm actually glad I made because it did lead to an interesting discovery. So I made a mistake in not packing my DIY HDMI director's monitor. I don't think I've mentioned this on the YouTube channel before. I may make a dedicated video about it at some point, but basically by buying this, I'm able to power an old TV with V-mounts by unscrewing the base and adding a vase amount to the back that adapts to uh, a baby pin, I'm able to put it on C-stands and light stands, Velcro my tear deck to the back, and it's a completely portable uh, wireless option to see a, a big display um, of what we're shooting on set. And this is the exact type of project where I would bring it out, um, but I did not pack it because my friend Maddie was planning on bringing her more professional director's monitor. However, I forgot when we were deciding on this that her monitor is SDI only, and my C70 is HDMI only. So we could not use my HDMI Teradeck to send a feed. But luckily, my port keys monitor has HDMI and SDI, and I realized that you can put HDMI in and it can convert it to SDI out. And this essentially turns my C70 into an SDI capable camera. My transmitter was still HDMI only, so we could not send a wireless feed. We had to send a wired feed to the director, but it was still much preferable to have a, um, a big image for him to see in close proximity to us compared to a portable little seven inch monitor with the Teradek, which would have been our backup plan if we did not find this solution. Um, this monitor is a great way to avoid having to buy like dedicated converters because this can do it for you. And another benefit of sending your signal from a monitor to a director instead of sending it directly from the camera is that you're then able to have a LUT on playback. The C70, for whatever reason, I, it should be fixed in firmware eventually. I can't believe they haven't done it yet with all the firmware updates, but there's no way to send the built-in LUT that you see on your screen over HDMI on playback. You can playback in the media page and see the LUT on your C70, but for some reason when it goes over HDMI, it's not gonna be on the director's monitor, the client monitor, it's gonna be flat. And that's very annoying. It's very, very annoying. Especially if the monitor that your client or director has does not have LUT capability, like the monitor that we were using. Or my DIY option, obviously, that's one of the drawbacks of using a TV and not a real production monitor, is that there are no built-in tools like LUTs. So by sending the LUT earlier in the chain on the port keys monitor, we're able to see the colorful image when we're shooting and when we're reviewing clips which is a big quality of life improvement. And lastly, I regret my lack of creativity when deciding on the depth of field for the wide shot. I initially exposed this intro shot at I think like a T2.8, and I really liked the separation that we got from our prop to the background. But then when we're done dollying back at the end of the reveal, our female character's expression was not in focus. And then after doing a few takes and reviewing them, we realized it was probably more important to actually see what our actors were doing than to have some nice shallow depth of field. Was that, that was the first one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm wondering if I should stop down a little bit so we get her in focus. Because she, she, like we're focused on the coffee maker. Yeah. 
which I which I like here. But when we dolly back, I do want her to be. Yeah, I think I want her to be more in focus. Well, let's just see how that looks like. Just that frame. If we stop down, how does it look? Like, does the, does it just does everything come in focus? And if that's the case, then we'll just we'll drop that. I think I like this better because he's also a little more in focus. And now that I've had ample time to reminisce, I realize that I gave the director a binary decision. Either keep it shallow or stop down to get her in focus. What I realize now is that I could have taken the time to be a bit more creative in my problem solving instead of just offering the first thing that came to mind, which is stopping down the lens. We could have potentially played with their blocking so that she was a little bit closer to the camera and on the same plane as our coffee maker so that when she gave her look to the side, they were both in focus. Or the even simpler option is I could have just racked focus to where she was. I think both of those are better solutions than I presented, um, but stopping down was the first thing that came to mind and that's what we did, regrettably. Now, of course, there are obviously things in this video that I am proud of and do like. That's just not the topic of this particular behind the scenes video. Every time I challenge myself to shoot something new, I come away with a bunch of things that I wish I did differently and that I can learn from. This video is obviously no exception. And now that you know all my dirty secrets, let's watch the spec one more time and let me know in the comments what you think about my postmortem. Incredibly delicious, impossibly convenient. Your favorite specialty coffee drinks, ready in seconds. A new day has arrived on Earth for coffee.